I'm observing with the APM 20mm 100 degree eyepiece. The Andromeda Galaxy is visible, it's near the zenith. Uh, I've covered my, it's cold night, I've covered my finder scope with the hat that I have so it will not get fogged. Condensation will not form on it. What I'm observing is the two dark lanes in the Andromeda Galaxy and uh, to the left of it in this refractor the reflector telescope is a Dobsonian 300p flex tube sky watcher and what I can say is that there is also a bridge of light to the visible to the uh, Andromeda galaxy the core is bright it almost dazzles the eye I can follow the also the light of the halo of the galaxy to the top part this direction which means in the image is down, downward and for several degrees of course and now I'm going to observe this with the Televue Dallas 21mm and compare the notes okay I'm now using the Televue uh, Ethos 21mm I guess I mentioned Dallas probably but that was wrong it's Ethos and my first impression is that first thing is that it's parafocal with the APM 20 millimeter. Second in, thing is that when I looked through the eyepiece, the field of view was a slightly wider magnification less so because it's one millimeter longer in focal length. The sky background was less dark, the contrast was a bit less, and uh, the rest of the things were similar. I'm surprised. Surprise, surprise. This cost three times the price of the APM. And yet the view is similar. No, the APM was similar to this. I don't see much difference. Uh, I can see same details. Uh, two dark lanes uh, which mark the spiral arms of the galaxy. The brightness of the core of the galaxy is same, slightly less in the APM is always almost dazzling. The core of the Andromeda galaxy was very bright, dazzling. This one is slightly less dazzling. And uh, I can see the same uh, two lines, two dark lanes, and uh, the halo from the M110 to the um, Gal uh, M31 was a little bit less visible. Is there, but is, you have to look for it. What is impressive is that the stars from the corner to the end are all are sharp and clear. In the APM, in the center, I can say around 60% of the center, 65% of, of the view is clear around the stars. The rest of it, when you get near the uh, corner, gets a little bit elongated. So uh, I think that's, that's probably the lyric coma mixed up with the astigmatism. Uh, but this one is corrected, well corrected for that. I'm going to observe more and just report on the rest of the results. Okay, I'll quickly change to the APM 20mm. Uh, I can see now a lot of details in the M32 galaxy. It's funny, you can see details in that. Brighter core, some lanes I can see and the halo around the M32. What is interesting is that I must correct myself about the kind of uh, uh, aberration I see. 65% uh, of the view, field of view is in focus and the corner is slightly starts when they are near the corner. They don't have the coma or astigmatism. They are a little bit out of focus. So what, what I should call it? Uh, I don't know, field curvature probably. Oh, it's, it's a little bit slightly not much out of focus the view in this one i prefer also the view in this one is more uh, immersive than the ethos 21 although it is three times cheaper let me just go remove the eye guard from the ethos the, which i added and actually practically that made it a little bit less field of view on that so i remove the eye guard and then come and see it with this one Okay, now I have removed the eye guard and put the rubber eye cup back. Uh, the view is more immersive as much as the, uh, the APM 20mm. Um, 
uh, magnification is a slightly less you can see you can notice that it's a little bit uh, less magnified and the contrast that means also is a little less now I can say that uh, the same effect as I see on that of course less in this one the stars are a little bit tighter but uh, from up to 70% of the field of view sharp then when you reach 70 up to the edge is a little bit less then near the edge 5% near the edge it just uh, uh, image gets mushy the stars get a little bit you know out of focus so uh, this is slightly the image quality in that sense better uh, being everything in focus for most of the field of view slightly better than the APM 20 millimeter and uh, but uh, because of the higher magnification uh, in the APM, the contrast is better, the visibility, uh, the, the clear clarity of the view is, that's what I prefer in that one. This is also good, it's tight, everything is round, the stars are round, pinpoint, very good, and uh, yeah. I'm surprised the bridge of light I mentioned cannot be seen in any photograph. I can see it visually. Okay, again, I'll quickly change to the APM 20 millimeter. Um, I can say that the uh, ethers 21 millimeter. I prefer the focal length of this one, 20 millimeter, means more contrast. But the uh, 21 millimeter ethers has a neater and uh, better image quality. I can say the stars are tighter and they're cleaner. This one doesn't correct. Uh, slightly coma which may exist in this uh, telescope i've not collimated it right right away but it was well collimated last night when i used it and now with the uh, ethos i can see that this really image is better more comfortable this one is more comfortable i should say <laughs> ethos is a little bit less comfortable because you know that if you get <laughs> damaged or anything you're just feeling guilty <laughs> worried but uh, it's more, you know, it's more friendly, this one, in a way, price-friendly, pocket-friendly, you can call it. Uh, if, if I want to go for a field trip and just somewhere in the field to observe, I will take this one, not the ethos. If I lose that ethos or break or something, that's a lot of money. This one is less money. Uh, but the comfort in this is better. The image in the ethos is tighter, stars are tighter, and the image quality is neater and nicer. So let me go for a max region 24 millimeter 82 degrees IP just to compare they have similar almost close uh, image scale okay this is the max vision 82 degrees 24 millimeter IP is equal to the export scientific um, uh, 24 millimeter 82 and also meet uh, UWA I think 5000 uh, or 4000 with the same t uh, focal length and the field of view. They're equal anyway, they look even similar. Export Scientific has a little bit different uh, design on this outer part of the eyepiece. The rest of it is exactly the same. Uh, the image quality of this and the field of view and the neatness and tightness of the sh shape of the stars is very close to the ethos. I must say, this is really good. And you can see that, like the APM. The core of the Andromeda galaxy is very bright and dazzling. You can see the rest of the details, but the core is very bright. Wow! On this one, what I can confirm is that now I can see a star cloud, one of the biggest star clouds of the uh, Andromeda galaxy, in one of the arms of it, is to the side that uh, M32 is located, but the opposite side of the uh, in the lower part, if that empty 32 is there, that star cloud is there, and the core of the galaxy is there. And then, if you go down here, that will be M110. Uh, so, really impressive. And the dark lanes are will be here. Really impressive. I can see so much details with this. Area. These are more visible, easier visible in this one. Let me just see if I can see that same detail in the Ethos 21. I'm back again in the ethos 21 millimeter wow i can see not only that star cluster another 
a star cluster, I should say, a star cloud, another star cloud also I can see, and I can see some spiral pattern in, in this side, not this side, that there are two dark lanes, on this side also I can see some dark, very finer dark lanes which define the star clouds and the halo kind of a spiral shape. I don't know, I'm not imagining things. I'm seeing a lot more. I know that those uh, halo which connects the uh, M31 to the M110 is actually very difficult to even visible in the 17 hours of uh, you know integrated photograph uh, exposure time. But visually, I can see <laughs> that that's easy. Yeah, wow. This is the closest thing to that <laughs> to that Expo Scientific. Let me use the Nagler Take 5 31mm, just see how it is. Definitely a halo of brightness is bridging between the M110 and M31. Offset, not exactly the core, a little bit above the core in this direction. If it is M110, the light goes like that, light bridge, in a kind of curve. It's amazing, I can see these things. No photograph can show that as clear as this. Okay, this is the Teleview Nagler 31mm Tape 5. Wow, that's image quality is this one. The field of view is bigger. I can see the extreme end of the galaxy's um, halo. And to the end. Oh, I see so much detail, my brain cannot really grasp all of that. Is only you can catch it probably in the photograph, but there's so much detail, so much dark lanes all over the place in the halo, even not just two dark lanes here, all over the place. Is it because I'm familiar with the shape of it? I'm just imagining things, or no, they're there, I can see it. And two star clouds that I mentioned are here and there, they are completely visible now. I can see it, and the halo from the M110 to the uh, t um, above the core of the galaxy is really clear, visible. Wow, wow, M31 is huge, very elongated. <laughs> I never saw it like that. I, thanks to my good sky, actually, I can see all of that. <laughs> Okay, now I put the 40 mm 68 degrees field of view max vision, which is ex equal to the Expo Scientific and the meat of the similar specification. The image quality, the neatness and tightness of the stars is very similar to Ethos and uh, Nagler. And, uh, but because the field of view is so huge, you know, magnification is so low. The sky background actually increases uh, the brightness of the sky and you lose some detail in that, the contrast is less. Of course, you see the same details if you look for them because you know they are there. But they are not as easy as Nagler 31, which was amazing. And when you go to, down to the 24mm uh, Expo Scientific again, 82 degrees, amazing, beautiful. And uh, yeah, in the ethos, um, yeah, good, but uh, I don't think that is as good as an angler, <laughs> in my view. Uh, I, I will just put it now, just to come back to it, just to see how I feel. Okay, now back in the ethos 21, I can say that uh, on this target, the target, which is M31, I prefer the Nagler 31 Take 5 and also Max Vision uh, Mead Explore Scientific 24 mm 82 degrees. They are more, uh, they have less magnification than this. Uh, I cannot get the whole galaxy or the parts that are visible there, they are there. You have to just uh, move the telescope to see them. And, uh, um, yeah, I prefer those ones for this target, which is a very big target anyway. It's a very expansive and uh, large target in the sky, angular diameter, which is really huge. Let's just go for another target. Now I'm using again the same eyepiece, uh, Teleview Ethos 21mm, looking at the double cluster, Chi and Kappa uh, Perseus, or Chi and 
H Perseus, yeah. And uh, that's the double cluster. One of the double cluster parts has a series of stars which look a little bit slightly like an octopus, or you can say like the Egyptian symbol, like a tie. And uh, I can see a lot of stars in that uh, asterism. The rest of peripheral view, I don't, I'm not a fan of it. The stars a little bit look elongated and they don't look very tight as they should be. When you look at them, they're all right, but uh, when you look at the center, the rest of the view is uh, is not as clear as it should be. Uh, it may be something from my eye, but that's my eye is a human eye. I suppose many people also have the same issues with their eyes. Our eyes is a little ball of a uh, camera obscura <laughs> with a lens in front of it. And uh, so let me just change it to um, Nagler and tw Max Vision 24 millimeters just to see how it is. Okay, this is the uh, Max Vision 2482 degrees equal to explore scientific and meet. Uh, I preserve the same focal length and field of view. Uh, the same problem with the peripheral you know, elongation of this. So this is a very challenging target, this uh, double cluster. But I can say that the numbers of the stars and the tightness and the focus of them in the ethos was better than this. I'm going now to change it to the uh, Nagler 31. Wow! None of the problems that I mentioned with the ethos and the uh, it is 21 and the max vision 2482 doesn't exist in this peripheral vision is as clear as the center and the same tightness and neatness and numbers of the star as the ETH is 21 so this is thumbs up for this teleview <laughs> Nagler 31 is a good eyepiece I must say I've never seen the double cluster so nice like this one, like in this eyepiece. Let me go and change it to the APM 20 millimeter and then max vision 40 millimeter 68. Okay, uh, now HTC 20 millimeter again, double cluster. The tightness and neatness and the roundness and the you know uniformity of the field of view and the total view of the cluster in this eyepiece is very similar to Nagler. The only thing is that Nagler had a bigger. Uh, area of the view and uh, this one had higher magnification beside that uh, yeah they are very similar and i think this one in this target double cluster is better than the ethos 21 let me just bring that again just for a moment okay i'm now in the ethos 21 millimeter just to prove that and I'm looking at the double cluster uh, the field of view is slightly wider than the 20 millimeter A, uh, APM and the stars are tight but the peripheral view has again that uh, kind of extension of the shape of the stars which one I prefer I think this is equal to APM or APM has an edge on this target to the ethos 21 to my eye with this telescope. Okay, now I'm looking with the max vision uh, 24 millimeter, 68 degrees, equal to the mid of the same, uh, an expo scientific of the same uh, specification. Uh, I can say that the view is only second to the, on this target, which is double cluster, second to the Nagla 35 which is uh, 31 uh, millimeter type 5. This is a big target, of course, a very extended target, and uh, visibility of it uh, is best to in the uh, lowest magnifications. So if I want on this target categorized, uh, Teleview Nagler 31 uh, millimeter type 5 comes first, second comes max vision, and uh, uh, 40 millimeter 68 degrees. Third comes the uh, APM, uh, uh, yeah, APM, APM um, 20, I was thinking that, uh, should I say the Max Vision 24mm? Uh, anyway, Max Vision 24mm also a little bit better or similar to the, um, similar to the ETHOS 21, which comes the last.
in this target. I'm surprised by that. Mama said that Magda 31 is a good IP. <laughs> is it? It's probably the best IP in this range that's up in this band of field of view and magnification is that on these targets, extended targets, big targets. Back to Nagda 31 on the double cluster, I must say that yeah, for color rendition and loyalty to the color, uh, this telescope, uh, this eyepiece is really good because it shows me several red stars actually. I couldn't not recognize any color in the other ones other than white or blue, probably white mostly. And in this one I can see some redness in some of the stars in this cluster, so that's really good. This is one of the best eyepieces. Let me go on the plates. Again, Nagler 31 millimeter, and I can see that the plate is very good. Not as good as the times I use the normal Aquamat refractor, and, uh, but it's good. It's good. I can see a lot of mobility around the stars also in this cluster. Okay, it is 21 on the plates. You can see the image quality on this one very similar to Nagler 31. Probably the stars are a bit tighter and better than. Closer to the, you know, being round, but the field of view of for the cluster, which is really huge, is smaller, so you don't see the whole cluster. Whereby with the 31 angular, you could easily see. So in this one, this ethos is better. Uh, okay, the seeing has been a little bit deteriorated. There is a thin layer of haze in this gas, so the, all the details I could see back in the M31 are now invisible. M31 is yet there, but it's like a normal night. So, nothing interesting for me, so I'm packing up and going. Okay, I'm now back indoors. My assessment of the Teleview Ethos 21 is that uh, it's not the eyepiece that uh, Wolf uh, at the moment is 769 with a postage and everything 781 it costs almost 800 pounds you can buy a big double door fridge with that, <laughs> that money does it work? no uh, APM will do similar to this and explore scientific uh, 82 degrees 24 will actually equal this uh, a better eyepiece than this and that uh, explore scientific or max vision or mid equal to this uh, max vision uh, 2482 is the nagler teleview nagler 31 millimeter mm -hmm. this is not a bad eyepiece is a good eyepiece but it doesn't worth that price. The price of it should be at, at the most one and a half times of the APM, not more. Uh, and it's quite heavy compared to that one. Definitely doesn't worth that much. <laughs> Am I going to sell it? No. Spent the night we're in very good conditions. The sky condition was really good. With these five eyepieces, underscore watcher, Skylarner Flex Tube 300P, reflecting Dobsonian telescope and I found that the, on those three targets that I observed plates Andromeda Galaxy and the, the double cluster in Perseus Teleview Nagler Tape 5 was the best closely matching that was the Max Vision 68 degree 40 millimeter eyepiece which is equal to mid and explore scientific of the same specification and then probably I should put this after that uh, uh, Nagler, so I put them close to here. This was really good, also surprisingly. Uh, 24 millimeter max vision, 82 degrees eyepiece, equal to mid and uh, explore scientific of the same specification and probably look in the same look with the mid. Then comes to the 100 degree eyepieces. I don't have any difficulty in seeing the field of view with the uh, 
no 100 degree eyepieces i'm using them all the time i have the lower magnification i have the sky watcher myriad version i have the apm and i have the ethos now ethos 21 here was used so my judgment was that ethos 21 millimeter is not the best eyepiece that it is advertised to be uh, in my experience and in my tar the targets that I saw and the exceptional night I spent with them, it was very closely matched by a APM HTC 20 millimeter eyepiece. And if if I was me and I was going to spend uh, again the same money, I would go for the APM. That gives me the better view, more comfortable, and it was cheaper also. If I could find a myriad. Sky watch a myriad 20 millimeter one i would definitely grab that instead of this one but it's not available you can buy it from aliexpress in china that one because you can actually rest your eye on it is like this max vision ones you can actually rest your eye on it and it gives a reference point for you uh ethos is not a bad eyepiece don't make me wrong don't take me wrong it's not a bad eyepiece but uh it's not much different to what you can uh, get with the apm or myriad and uh, the performance on this ones and the comfort of viewing and everything was better in this uh, series of eyepieces uh, so that that comes to me the last probably ethos because of the uh, cost factor comes the last also so uh, but if you want to based on your judgment for purchasing this on this i must say that uh, the best one is the nagler then there is Max Vision one and equal Expo Scientific and uh, um, uh, Mead one, 68 degree and 82 degrees are really good. These are, I don't have difficulty with the 100 degrees, but these are good, but not the best. I could have a better view with the Nagler and this other two. Just after using these eyepieces, the weather was so clear near the morning, uh, early down that I just uh, couldn't resist. I went and uh, took this uh, giant binoculars, which is uh, 20 by 80. I bought it second hand for around 60 pounds some years ago. And I used it and I could see everything. You know, I saw M33, M31, M32, uh, M110 satellites of the Jupiter, uh, Andromeda Galaxy. I saw the M35, M45 plates, M42, M35 is in the, of course, the Gemini. I saw the M1, which is uh, very elusive if you want to find it by the, uh, you know, just star hopping. It sometimes can be elusive, easily observable with this. Then I realized why I'm bothering uh, myself with those all these eyepieces and telescopes. It's like a, a blinding myself. This was an eye opener. That's why I practically could use it easily. Then it dawned on me that this is because of all this hype they create in the way forums astronomy forums and it dawned on me you know i used this astronomy forums for a few months then it gradually dawned on me these people are there for a reason and that reason is to actually uh, you know the sell these eyepieces uh, first light optics for example sponsors or actually owns the uh, uh, stargazers launch another company in america owns that uh, what is it called? Uh, this, uh, cloudy Nights. So their duty there, the moderators and the people who, who may have uh, several accounts even themselves, or the guys who work with them, uh, their job is like these shops. You go to Turkey or somewhere like that. They, they drag you into the shop from the street. They have to call you or you know, drag you, uh, attract you to the inside of the shop so they can sell you something. Their job is like that. They make this all this hype about Takahashi, Teleview, all this expensive stuff. And they don't let you actually get the advice or the thing that you actually you have to do. And that is observation and enjoying your hobby. It makes a money pit for you that you're just all the time spending because uh, they have the better one than you. And all the time they're showing it to everyone and they're photographing it. They show you know what the postman has brought look at my case uh, full of eyepieces expensive eyepieces this is the way they trick the people to come and actually spend money when actually you could do better than that with the uh, binocular uh, i if i also have a 750 uh when i was younger i used to have 1240 uh, and i could see all the messier object with that the 1240 which was a russian zenith uh, 
uh, binocular. This one is Swedish, I think, or English or whatever. Helkinson, so it must be Swedish. And uh, I could do all of that. You know what I need with this? Just a, uh, a sunbed so that I can lay down in it. I hold this in my hand. If I want to, you know, have a more uh, restful experience, I just use a lighter one, a smaller one, 750. And that's it. That's all that you need. All of these practical expenses of st stuff, they don't give you any more joy than using your own. Great amateur astronomers like James Alcott, uh, the guy who discovered a lot of comets, uh, all the time they were using the binoculars and they were using it inside the, <laughs> can you believe it, inside the conservatory from, from within the, looking through the sky from the, within a double glaze, from through a double glaze window, glass, they were looking at it. They didn't need any of this expensive stuff. These things came since the first light optics and other things decided to, you know, push up their sales. They have accomplices in this, uh, the moderators, if you look at them. One of them actually get kicked out because he was not doing it. John Huntley, if you look in the Stargazer's launch, John uh, was one of the greatest moderators. And he stopped using actually the names of the brands. And then the, he was kicked up for whatever reason it was. Then he stopped using name brands. But he was active in the forum after that even, just uh, on his own. Probably he couldn't tell to his family that he has been kicked out. He's an old man, you know, he's retired. And with the disgrace, they kicked him out. And uh, he had to, you know, pretend that he's there. Uh, but he stopped using the names. And he was also telling to them, look, you make all these things about Takashi. And this. It's just a reflector, 80 millimeter reflector, 100 millimeter, 120 uh, aperture size refractor. They're not any better than a Dobsonian. They cannot be better. They cannot be really uh, highly better than an Acromat or a Fraunhofer telescope like this. Like this red uh, star wave. And that was it. Um, they insulted him in a very bad way over the uh, uh, mount by the Rovan Astronomy. Uh, I think AZ-75. Then he was uh, suggesting that, uh, that for the test, they should actually have included uh, the, some uh, slow motion controls. Those guys were the one of them called the Stu. He, he was a really a real bully, and the other one is Grant. They started to actually uh, insulting him in a way. They chased him in his way, uh, posts until really they mocked him as that oh, you're, you're poor, you cannot afford these things. This kind of things, the behavior they do. And he has to give up, and I've not seen him for a while now. He's not active anymore, although he was a moderator in the past. This is very nasty, you know. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't fall into the trap of spending money. A binocular serves you better. <laughs> uh, this is this is my advice to you. Uh, by the way, the John, I mean, his real name is John Huntley. In the uh, uh, Cloudy Nights American Forum, he comes with his real name, John Huntley. But in the in the Stargazer's Lounge, he was a moderator under the name John. And uh, yeah, he has reviews of the many eyepieces, including, for example, Skywatch in Myriad, the Skywatch SWA. Look for this, you will see that he has compared the Myriad 20 millimeter with the 21 millimeter ethers, and practically thought they don't, they don't, they're not much different. I wish I would listen to his advice. And uh, that's what everybody else also says. <laughs> Practically, APM is equal to, APM 20 minutes is equal to the Skowatcher Myriad in the mechanical field or anything. This is the same as the Ethos, practically. Just Ethos wants to be, you know, snobbish to make it 21, so it's standing out. Like 30, everybody makes 30 millimeter now, 82 degree eyepieces. Um, Al Nagar decided to make it 31. <laughs> So standing up. These are all marketing tricks. John, uh, yeah, he's not there anymore, as far as I know. Yeah, get one of these, and you will not need those all those eyepieces because the eyepiece is just one part of the thing. And in here, you have this eyepiece, and this is gives you the give gave me actually the biggest field of view I could see. M33 was shining, dazzling in the telescope, even with the Nagler, it's just nothing more than a little fuzz. But with this, you could actually see it. 
and M31, M32, and M110, all this, uh, that area was full of this, uh, uh, you know, uh, deep sky objects. Unless you want to do some, uh, you know, planetary thing that you just can do it with any acromat. You can do it even cheaper with the Dobsonian. Second, five second. Huh? 